In around 2018, satellite photos from the Xinjiang region of China began picking up hundreds of camps, each capable of holding thousands of people. Much of this intelligence work was done by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute in a great case of Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Seriously, though, what's with all these camps, mate? The Uyghurs are a predominantly Muslim ethnic group living in Xinjiang. Xinjiang is basically China's version of Western Australia, a remote and beautiful part of the country with vast deserts, a wine region, rich mineral wealth, and a proud and unique people who worship different gods to their neighbours. And like West Australians, many Uyghurs secretly want independence from their tyrannical Eastern masters. While Australia has simply ignored its Western separatist movement, China's totalitarian regime has put over a million Uyghurs and other minorities in these camps. Now, like you, when I hear totalitarian regime and camps in the same sentence, I get the shivers on my worry bone. Thankfully, the Chinese government can explain everything. The Chinese government claims that these camps are uh, vocational training centres and that people are not forced to go to them, that the detainees in them are not detainees but students. Set up ostensibly, according to the Chinese government, to offer voluntary education and training. Ah, voluntary education. I guess all that razor wire must be to retain information. So what do these detainees, sorry, students, learn at Forever TAFE? According to the Chinese government, singing, dancing, art classes and important skills like identifying pants. But the reality is very different. These camps are de facto prisons and people have to go in them. They don't have a choice. Um, they're separated from their families and inside they undergo basically political indoctrination. So that can include having to sit for hours and listen to speeches by Xi Jinping. As well as political brainwashing, an Australian intelligence report says the detainees are also used as forced labourers and has questioned the involvement of some of the world's biggest clothing brands like Nike, Puma and Adidas. But this isn't about making sneakers for free, it's about erasing the Uyghur population. And it's working. Population growth and birth rates uh, in the region of Xinjiang, but particularly in the Uyghur ethnic minority regions, had fallen dramatically. They declined up to 90%, in some cases up to 100%. Since the crackdown began, natural population growth in Uyghur regions has plummeted. In a since-deleted tweet, the Chinese embassy boasted this is because Uyghur women were being emancipated, so they were no longer baby-making machines. But first-hand accounts paint a far more brutal picture. Disturbing evidence has emerged that China is forcing women to be sterilised or fitted with contraceptive devices in the province of Xinjiang. We lost a part of our body. We lost our identity as women. We will never be able to have children again. The Australian government is yet to label this a genocide, but we should call it what it is. It might put us on the same side as a doomsday clown, but at least we'd be on the right side of history.